let's say we're in Miami, and we're looking out over the wide open ocean. That ocean is deep space. The orbit around the Earth is the shoreline where the waves are crashing. The deep water is space. And there is a continent out there, three times the size of Africa. That's the moon. The deep water is space. And there is a continent out there, three times the size of Africa. That's the moon. Greetings, awesome beings. My name's Campbell. This is Autodidactic. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And today I want to talk about is the ocean space? And if so, are there other continents out there? Maybe continents that we're told are planets. Who knows? Let's jump into it. Is the ocean space? Is space the ocean? I find it very interesting what this guy Stephen Quast is saying, and he is working for well, promoting Space Force. He's talking in analogies, but what is it that he's saying underneath? What is the message that he's really trying to get out? Because as we know, these people who like to control us, they invert everything. They give us, you know, 90% truth and 10% lies. They speak between the lines. So I'm going to play a bit more of him and then this speech, and I'll leave the link to the full speech below if you want to check it out. Uh, but what do you think his real message is? What do you think he's really trying to say? He talks a lot about the space being ocean and the moon being a continent out there and navies being space fleets. And of course, we do call them spaceships. Is it there in our face? You know, has it been there the whole time? They're just ships on the ocean, and the ocean is space. And I wanted to give a big shout out to Jim Dillinger as well. Uh, the link to his channel is below. Go check him out. He does some great work. And I was watching one of his videos, and that's where I first saw the clip of this Stephen Quast. Let's have a listen to Stephen. What you are watching is the equivalent of us sitting here on our continental United States. Let's say we're in Miami, and we're looking out over the wide open ocean. That ocean is deep space. The orbit around the Earth is the shoreline where the waves are crashing. The deep water is space. And there is a continent out there three times the size of Africa. That's the moon. And nobody lives there. It's only three days away. It has massive amounts of everything that Mother Earth has, to include water on the South Pole in the craters greater than the Great Lakes as far as volume. And China is racing with ships on that open ocean to that great, open, desolate place that can be turned into resources and blessing for a marketplace. The technology is on the engineering benches today, but most Americans and most in Congress have not had time to really look deeply at what's going on here. But I've had the benefit of 33 years of studying and becoming friends with these engineers and these scientists. 33 years, 33 years, the power of space will change world power forever. And it doesn't have to be a big country to do it. It can be a small island country, let's say New Zealand. This article is from February 2018. Why Silicon Valley billionaires are prepping for the apocalypse in New Zealand. And down here it says, if you're interested in the end of the world, you're interested in New Zealand. If you're interested in how our current cultural anxieties, climate catastrophe, decline of transatlantic political orders, resurgent nuclear terror, manifest themselves in apocalyptic visions, you're interested in the place occupied by this distant archipelago of apparent peace and stability against the roiling unease of the day. So there we go. That's why we should move to New Zealand with all the billionaires and I'll leave the link for these articles below. And down here, it just tells us how there's lots of billionaires moving to New Zealand. This article is from March 18, 2017. Why are all the billionaires moving to New Zealand? And from 2020, yes, the ultra rich are still buying $80 million homes in New Zealand, in case you were wondering. And although sales on the lower end of the market have all but ceased due to the pandemic, of course, 
It says that the million dollar plus properties are still selling with 85 residential sales of $8 million plus just in March and April 2020. So why are all the billionaires and stars moving to New Zealand? And this is Gleason's 1892 map of the world. And whereabouts is New Zealand? On a map like this, you'll see it's extremely close to Antarctica, one of the closest points, of course. So why are all the billionaires going to New Zealand? Is it maybe because it's just a hop, skip and a jump to Antarctica or to the edge of our realm, to the gates to other realms? There ecosystem, their economy, their marketplace in cislunar space, which is basically the distance between the Earth and the Moon and beyond. And we, as an American society, we are sitting on Miami Beach, sipping our pina colada, looking out at the waves, and as we are watching China build this navy with battleships and destroyers going out into the open oceans and off to this continent three times the size of Africa, we are building buoys and lighthouses, which are the satellites. They can see and hear what's going on, but can't do a darn thing about that rover on the back side of the moon, the far side of the moon, that if we were to try to go there, they could shoot us down. China is our competition. Russia is our competition. They see the power of the economy of space in these four sectors, and they are rushing to that future. And there is no guardian force in America, but there is in China. China has already built the organization and has the strategy and the doctrine, the technology and the builders for their guardian force of space. They are building a navy in space with the equivalent of battleships and destroyers that will be able to maneuver and kill and communicate with dominance. And we are not. Now, this analogy might help clarify the picture going back to my original comment of what's really going on here. China, on the far side of the moon, mapping today the minerals and the resources so that they can eventually have infrastructure to build and 3D print and have a manufacturing industry in space. What you are watching is the equivalent of us sitting here on our continental United States, let's say we're in Miami, and we're looking out over the wide open ocean. That ocean is deep space. The orbit around the Earth is the shoreline where the waves are crashing. The deep water is space. And there is a continent out there, three times the size of Africa. That's the moon. And nobody lives there. It's only three days away. It has massive amounts of everything that Mother Earth has. Is there any unexplored land left on this Earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now. A strategy of speed to get really to this useful. new continent of wealth to live in, called the moon. But militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, well, do you hope to see that? I do. So I'm willing to say to you that uh, there will be a number of expeditions that will follow I think uh, year after year, the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested. Well, Admiral Byrd, I can understand, I think everybody can, the interest in the North Pole because it's so near our greatest challenger, Soviet Russia, but why this interest in the uh, bottom of the world? Nobody living down there, is there? No, it's, um, it's pretty cold. There's only one permanent resident, that's the Emperor Penguin. The little ones live further north. I tell you one reason they're interested. It's by far the most uh, valuable, important place left in the world for science. That's why the scientific groups all over the nation 
are really interested. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation, those to come after us, or even uh, during your lifetime. Because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. And uh, you know, as the world shrinks with an ever-increasing acceleration, far-flung places, once useless like we thought the North Pole was, and no man's land, become very useful. Uh, the bottom of the world will be important, not only to us, but to our allies. And China is racing with ships on that open ocean to that great, open, desolate place that can be turned into resources and blessing for a marketplace. And space is the navy for the 21st century economy for China, who's furiously swimming away to that continent of Africa as we're sitting on the beaches of Miami admiring the tide and our buoys and lighthouses that can see exactly what's going on on the shoreline in our orbit. Why do we need a space force? Because it's an economic competition for the values of the future. When do we need it? Now. What does it need to do? It doesn't have to have war fighting capability. It has to be able to defend the economy of space. A coast guard, a merchant marine for space. China is feverishly developing capability to dominate those three areas in cislunar space, and we are not. We are perfecting orbital mechanics, the shoreline work, precision, quality, brilliant capability and equipment, but irrelevant to China that can maneuver outside the gravity well, around the backside of the moon, and there's nothing we can do if we are not dominant in that geography as well. Remember in the end, nobody wins unless everybody wins. Come!